What's up everybody, Mark with Coffee and Toys here. It's Friday, unfortunately, Destro issue number one is not out today, so I will not be doing any new comic book reviews around G.I. Joe today, but that's okay, because I did want to get a quick video out and talk with you all about a couple things going on, a little bit of Yojo June, and really I want to talk a little bit more about the Star Wars Cantina, because quite frankly, I'm on the fence, and I want to know what your guys' uh, and gals' thoughts are on it. So let's talk about the G.I. Joe, uh, Yojo June Week 2, and the Star Wars HasLab Cantina. But of course, before we talk about all that, let's talk about the coffee that's in your cup, because the coffee in my cup today, just saying, is coffeebrandcoffee.com. That's right, coffeebrandcoffee.com has all your coffee needs. And let me tell you, I'm drinking uh, good old number three today. Yep, that's right. No frills, no gimmicks. They number their coffee, so you don't really have to put much thought into fancy, you know, marketing terms. It's just number three, the medium roast. And that is what I am drinking today. And if you are interested in drinking some coffee brand coffee, make sure to use the link in the description down below. Save yourself 5% on your first order or your 50th order. Now, with that being said, I am going to take a drink. And... I want to talk about Yojo June uh, versus the second week of Yojo June. A couple things are going on, so let's talk about pre-orders. Now, of course, the first pre-order that came up was uh, the, or for this week rather, was the retro carded Cobra Commander, Cobra Trooper, and Stalker. And of course, I pre-ordered all of these. I got one Stalker, two Troopers, and two Cobra Commanders. Uh, for my collection. I think they're due to ship around the October time frame, which is perfect because that's my uh, birth month. So I'm looking very excited to that. I've seen some people complaining about Stalker's uh, beret and it having the same color pattern as his uh, the rest of his outfit and that that's not correct if you look at the original figure or any subsequent figure. That's not how it works. You know, it doesn't bother me a whole lot. Now, granted, we've been, you know, you can repaint it very easily. Maybe the other uh, beret from Stalker will work uh, well on it. If not, not a huge deal in my book. But I do like the way that one looks. Uh, but I did only pre-order one. And if you are interested, I believe he is still available on Hasbro Pulse's website. Uh, Entertainment Earths, the big bad toy stores of the world. They have him and the other two readily available. I do think the Trooper sold out. Uh, it sold out twice, I believe. Actually, let's check it out right now because I, as many people that were harping on not liking the Trooper, boy, it sold out very quickly. So I thought that was very, very uh, interesting. Let's see. Uh, let's do G.I. Joe Classified and let's see how many of those guys are around. Uh, no, right now the uh, Trooper is available. So is Cobra Commander and so is Stalker. Uh, so yeah, if you're interested in those, they are still readily available. Now, along the lines of... Uh, Pre-orders, I actually got a notification today that my ferret will be shipping soon. So if you uh, pre-ordered the uh, Cobra ferret, it should be shipping within the next week or, so, uh, week or two, so that is very exciting. Uh, I never was a huge fan of the ferret. Now, of course, I picked up one because it's a Cobra vehicle. My biggest issue with it, though, is the misspelling of the word launch. Um, man, I don't know who proofreads the the... The, the, the decals or the tampos or whatever print it is. But come on, Hasbro guys and gals, you need to do better. You can't, you can't have that. I mean, that's a glaring error, and hopefully they'll re-release it and they'll fix it. Uh, if you've seen any reviews on it, it does look pretty bad because it's in pretty large letters on the side of the fender, and just how you, how you miss that is beyond me. But, I mean, between that and the Dreadnoughts, uh, they have Knock Life or something on the back of... I don't know if it's Torch or Ripper. I can't remember who it is. But they misspelled Knox, and Lenny tried to play it off as, oh, you know, they're dumb. They don't know how to spell things. No, that's just your... That's somebody getting lazy at their job, and that should have been caught. But the, the egregious one is, is misspelling launch. That's not a hard word, especially when it's the letter N that's missing. Um... But anyway, the ferret's on, those, on its way. I'm looking forward to it. Um, it'll be nice to have it. I don't know what I'll do with it. I don't know where I'll put it. I'll figure that out later. That's pretty much how I roll when it comes to what I have back here. So very exciting that the ferret is coming soon to all of us collectors that pre-ordered it. Uh, let's see. What else do we have to talk about with Yojo June? They haven't really done... Oh, they did the Dragonfly unboxing. Oh my gosh, that was amazing and made me realize I should have backed two of them. But again, what always pops up in my head is what am I going to do with two of them? 
uh, the last G.I. Joe Kickstarter, or not Kickstarter, sorry, HasLab, that I did more than one of was the, um, the Sky Striker. I did five of those because I love, you know, my three and three quarter inch Joes. And man, that was absolutely insane to do that many. And so when the His Tank came around, I just did one of those. And then once I got it, I immediately wished I had done two of them because now I have that uh, Mickey Mouse Cobra Commander somewhere back here. Uh, oh, he's, he's way up there at the top. Um, you know, I only got one of them, so I can never open him, which makes me very sad. But, you know, I got the retro one coming, so that's fine. I'll just, I'll just wait for that one. I've waited this long to have one uh, in a classic vintage style. I can wait till October. But yeah, they unboxed that Dragonfly, and let me know in the comments what you thought of it. I, it looks amazing. I had no issues with any of it. I've seen people harping on some of the, the figures, which, you know, Lenny said, these are not final. We're still working on things. People complaining about how uh, Glenda's face looks. Uh, people complaining about um, Airborne uh, being too glossy, which Lenny literally said it's not going to be that way. But man, those figures overall look amazing. The Dragonfly looks amazing. Uh, I do wish they would have showed some of the electronics and how they worked. Maybe they didn't work in that particular model. That's why they couldn't show it. But very glad that I uh, backed the Dragonfly for one. Wish I had done two. Uh, let me know in the comments. Did you guys back it? Uh, just kind of curious. And what are your thoughts? Are you excited? I'm excited. Uh, also note they keep pushing the uh, the date it's going to come out further and further uh, into this the end of this year. You know, it was originally going to be like spring 2024. Then it became summer 2024. Now they're saying late summer, early fall 2024. Now, again, that's how it is with any Kickstarter. There's going to be production issues. There's going to be setbacks. There's going to be unforeseen circumstances. It's just part of the game you play when you're waiting for one of these things, uh, especially at this scale, to be created. I mean, they've got, like they said in the uh, the video, not it's, it's like an entire assortment. I mean, they've got four figures they're sending you and the Dragonfly itself. That's a lot of pieces and parts that you have to make sure are just absolutely perfect to meet your standards uh, which are generally good outside the, the fair fiasco. Um, so I, you know, on, especially on things like this, take your time, get it right the first time. Don't send out stuff and then it, we, we are sad because we get it and you can't get it fixed after the fact. So that was a fun unboxing video. I was glad to do that. Can't wait for San Diego Comic-Con in a couple of weeks. And yeah, um, moving on. So let's, let's talk about the, the HasLab Cantina because I want to talk about that a little bit because I am on the fence on whether I am going to pick it up or not. The missus already said, if you want it, get it, get one, get two, do whatever you want. Um, but my, I have a couple issues. So first thing I want to do is I want to talk about where it's currently at right now and kind of what my thoughts are on if it will fund, uh, the too long didn't read version. Yes, it'll fund. Um, right now it is exactly at 4,700 backers. I just refreshed my screen. 4,700 backers of the target of 8,000 ending in 24 days and 10 hours, 31 minutes as of this video's recording. So what do I think of this? I think, I think first of all, it's very cool. Um, I do have issues with it. As I look at it on the screen, I, there's more to it that I want. My biggest hang up on it right now is that the outer walls look very generic. I'm not talking about the interior walls. I'm talking about what would be considered the outer walls. They're hollow, they're blank. It doesn't look good. If you were going to display this as a the, the deluxe version, which has all the walls, I would want the outside walls to look like the outside of the Moss Eisley Cantina. I'm sorry, I think that's something the Star Wars team should have thought about a little more. And yeah, it just, it looks really crappy to have that empty space with no design in it. The interior looks amazing. I think, I think there are gonna be some small improvements, but the interior looks amazing. I have no gripes with that whatsoever. The exterior bothers me. Uh, the only exception being the, the front entrance, which looks like that front entrance is perfect. It looks great. I would just want the entire outside to look like that. Um, yeah, it just, I, I wish, I think the other thing I might've mentioned before, I can't remember if I mentioned in the previous video, I would like it to also have a floor. And I've seen a lot of collectors, I've watched a few videos saying some people are for the floor, some people are against the floor. One person, I think it was on uh, on uh, Geek Dad, uh, Toy Geeks, Geek Dad Life. Um, I think they actually, I think it was the Mad Hatter that said it, maybe somebody else, I can't remember. Um, someone said just Get some sand, throw it on, throw it on a table. You're perfect. And I was like, well, technically that'd probably work pretty well too. 
be messy, but it would work. Um, but let me know, first of all, are you guys on the fence like I am? Because I don't know if I want this. It's big. It's 39 inches or what is it? 36 inches by 19 inches. I, I, it's large. I know that. I'm looking through the pictures right now trying to find the dimensions. Uh, 30 over 32 over 19. So 32 by 19, we'll call it. I mean, that's very large. That's a very large playset. And then you have to decide whether you want the, the, the base or the deluxe version. And to me, that's kind of a, ugh, come on guys. Come on. That's just, that's grabbing for money. You shouldn't have done. You should have just done one or the other, uh, charging another hundred dollars for two or three more walls. Yeah, I don't know how I feel about that. Um, if I backed it, I might only do the $400 version because I think I would do it like isometric uh, and want that opening there so you can see into it. Uh, but let me know your thoughts. I would be really curious if you guys were going to go for it. you doing the $400 or the $500 version. And how many are you doing? Because like I said, I, I might do one and I thought, well, I should do two because I've regretted the last couple of Haslabs not doing two of them. And of course, I tend to, and when I buy multiples, I use one to recoup the cost of purchasing one for myself, right? A lot of people do that, and that's actually an issue. You know, as these has lives have went on and on, people are starting to get that idea. They're like, oh, I'll just buy multiples and I'll sell them on the secondary market and I'll recoup some of my costs, which in turn, more people do that, it drives the cost down, and then you wind up not being able to fully recoup uh, what it costs you to have one for your own personal collection. And the Sky Striker is a prime example of that. The Hiss tank is becoming a prime example of that as the prices go, as a matter of fact, Sky Striker, you can pretty much get that for cost right now. Uh, if you're still you know, trying to find one, you have one, it's not hard to find one for cost right now, what it would have been to get into the, uh, the HasLab years uh, ago. Same for the Hiss tank, it, you know, that thing was going for, I can't remember what the original price tag was, um, but you know, I, I've seen those going for in the low fives, I think, and I think that was with everything. So I mean, that to me is a pretty good deal, but definitely not double the cost of what it initially was. So yeah, when it comes back to this cantina though, so I've been on the fence. I'm like, where would I put it? I really like four inch, uh, the vintage collection. I love the fact that you get the, the Tonica or Tanika sisters, however you pronounce that. The stretch goals I have another issue with because I, I think it'll fund, and I said that earlier, I don't think they're even gonna get to the $11,000 mark, or I'm sorry, the 11,000 backer mark. I don't think they're gonna get to it. I don't think anybody has a, a strong desire to have another Greedo in their collection. Although I did listen to a good argument from another uh, uh, toy podcast review. I can't remember the name and I apologize. But one of the collectors on it said, we need a new Greedo because they've been, any that's been released is based on the old buck from like 2010, 2011. And it needs one with the ball hip joints and you know, the more articulation. So I get that. I mean, I guess I can get that from us. But for a more casual collector like myself, of the vintage collection, I, I have no problem just, I mean, just grabbing any Greedo I can find. Uh, I don't think I have a Greedo right now, but I could probably find one fairly cheap. Um, and again, this is going to be something that is going to be a centerpiece of a collection, and you're just going to throw as many people in there as you can. You don't really need to have the newest, the latest, the greatest. I'm sure there's going to be plenty of uh, serious Star Wars collectors and casual collectors that if they go in on this, they don't need every perfect version of every vintage collection style character. They're just going to say, hey, I need to fill my cantina, make it hustle and bustle like it was in the movie, and that's the end of it. Like, I, I have a Han Solo back here. I don't need another Han Solo, even though I know they're going to release a newer version of Han Solo. And they're releasing another version of Luke, and they're releasing another version of Chewbacca, and they're releasing another version of Leia. And, you know, I don't need all those. I've got perfectly... I'm glad with the ones I have. So again, that first tier is really weak sauce in my opinion. Not having the Cantina ban, also weak sauce. Um, I really think they should have included that in the base. Uh, again, for $400, I guess, that, let me present this as an argument. Instead of giving us more walls, why not put the band in the $500 tier mark? Hey, for $400, you get the, these base characters, and three quarters of a wall. Uh, if you want the deluxe version, we give you the Cantina ban. Man, that seems like that would have been a no-brainer. I mean, really, because I mean, they all right, they all look the same. Uh, I keep wanting to call them Max Rebo, but that's that's Java's band. Um, can't remember the name of the Cantina band uh, members. 
but I mean, they, they all pretty much look the same. It wouldn't cost them that much to recreate one character five times or however many there are and give them their unique instruments. Um, you, let me know what you think about that in the comments. I think that would be, if they included that, the $500 tier with the walls, then I would do it no problem. I'd say $500, you're giving me everything in that base plus the band for $500, sign me up for $500. I'll take, I'll take two, more than likely. Um, but yeah, I'm, like I said, I'm on the fence of it. And another thing that I, I got to thinking about, and I wish if I was, if I hadn't just done this off the cuff, I would have prepared a little better. But I also thought about the pricing and I thought about something, another cantina I own, and that is the Navar uh, Navarno, Navarro, Navarro Cantina, which I do own, still in the box, haven't opened it yet. I picked that up on a, when it was discounted, either a power plays day or something like that. And I got to thinking about it and I'm like, okay, how much was this thing initially and how much, you know, does it make sense worth where they have it priced now at the $400 mark versus what it costs for me? And let me see if I can find out how much that set originally was. Cause I think I paid, I think it was 75 or something. Navarro Cantina. Uh, let's see, it was, okay. It was originally $52.99 and it came with a Death Trooper. You got two walls, you got a back wall. I guess actually it came with three walls. I don't know if that's three walls or two walls. We're going to call it two and a half. I don't know. It's I'm looking at the pictures of it right now. So it did have this wraparound section, or maybe that's, I don't know. I, I've never opened it. But that was $52.99. And I got it cheaper than that because I probably got it on a power plays day or something like that. So I probably got it sub 40 bucks. So I was like, well, if this is, uh, you know, 12 inches long by, you know, maybe six inches wide deep, uh, does that line up? And it's not as impressive. And again, I'm just looking from the shots because I, I haven't even opened mine. You know, what from this one makes the Moss Isla Cantina better and worth that price point based on what they've given us already? Now, I did make sure also, my, my initial thought was to say, okay, how much of the Navarro Cantina are they going to just reuse, repurpose for Moss Isley? And I can confirm without any shadow of a doubt at least when it comes to the walls uh, and the bar itself, uh, the Moss Isley Cantina is completely new. Now, could there be some difference, uh, some reuse of like cups and jars and, you know, bottles? Maybe. Now, I know that the bar stools with the Navarro Cantina are exclusive to that. It does not come with the Moss Isley one. I have not exhaustively looked at every single, you know, glass cup, bottle, whatever, to see if those are the same or different between the Moss Isley Cantina and the Navarro Cantina. But there's a lot more new stuff coming with the uh, Moss Isley Cantina, so I can look past that. But yeah, so nothing that you really see there is is reused. So I thought that was kind of cool. And you get one figure with the Navarro Cantina. Obviously, you get one, two, three. So we're getting the, the two sisters, the bartender, uh, Weir, and it um, does come with somebody else, right? I'm just not thinking of it. Uh, but you get, you get a few action figures, so that's good. Um, but yeah, I'm still on the fence about it. Let me know in the comments what you think. Oh, the one thing I want to share uh, with, with uh, I went to uh, Geek Dad Life, uh, Toy Geeks. Uh, if you go to their website, they actually have uh, HasLab charts where they track if these things are on point to actually fund or not. Um, so I'm actually bringing it up right now on the screen. Uh, unfortunately, I uh, won't be able to show it and talk about the same time. So I'm just going to tell you where it's at right now. Uh, based on that 47, it looks like it's at 4,701 now. So one more per person backed it since we started talking about it. And uh, this, is, this chart, by the way, is by Brian Brinks. So shout out to Brian Brinks for creating these charts. Current back account, 4,701. It's on day eight, 24 days left. It's 59% funded. And it's, it's tracking on being successful, but barely. Because we know the last day people are going to push towards it. And even Mr. Stevie out on Instagram and, and his other social media accounts is like pressing people every day, you know, do the cantina and call me, call me jaded. But whenever you have people from Hasbro or former Hasbro employees, I, I don't know if he still works for them. I'm assuming he does, um, pushing product every single day. That means it's not, it's not doing as well as you think it's going to do. So you got to keep pushing, keep reminding people, this is out here. This is out here. Uh, but yeah, like I said in my video last week, it's it's doing that flat line right now with just ever so slightly maybe creeping up. 
but it's it's going to be close. If I if I look at this trend line and I just kind of try to imagine it going out, it's going to take a big spike on that last day, like with most Kickstarters, to fund. And forget it getting to the 11,000, the 14,000, and the 17,000 for those additional tiers. Just forget it. Unless something crazy happens, I don't see it happening. And the other issue is crossover between uh, other IPs. So another thing I've taken into consideration, I'm sure a lot of you have too, is we've got San Diego Comic-Con coming up. We have the new G.I. Joe Kickstarter coming out. Or I'm sorry, I keep calling them Kickstarters. HasLab coming out, the supposed Rattler, which if it's a Rattler, great. If it's not, cool. I'd be pleasantly surprised if it wasn't a Rattler myself. Um, that's going to set in a lot of people's minds because they're saying, okay, you want four or $500 from me right now uh, at the beginning of July. And then at the end of July, you know they're going to come out with the G.I. Joe Classified. And there's a lot of crossover between collectors like myself that have Star Wars and G.I. Joe. You know, that's a lot of money to throw down. Not, not... Even not, we shouldn't discount San Diego Comic Con itself, which is going to have uh, all sorts of exclusives, you know, G.I. Joe and Star Wars, and who knows what else. There's a lot of money that's going to be spent, and people are going to have to sit here and decide is the cantina worth it to have? And that, again, that's another thing that kind of I go back and forth is it really, do I really need this thing? Because I'm, I'm almost positive, even if. Let's just assume it's a Rattler that I'm going to do it. I mean, it, it would, if it wasn't a Rattler, it, it, I would still, whatever it is, I'm probably going to do it. Um, I, gotta, I feel like I'm going to sneeze. Sorry. Um, but yeah, the trend mark right now, it's barely going to make it. It needs 3,299 people right now. It'll definitely probably get there. I don't. I, I really don't think it's going to. I don't think... They're going to let a Rancor situation happen again. But again, they've come up with some pretty stinkers that haven't, you know, been able to make it. You know, the the double-bladed lightsaber comes to mind from the HasLab that absolutely nobody wanted. Um, but those stretch goals, I just don't see them happening. But hey, let me know in the comments if I'm wrong, because I would love to be wrong. Because if I wind up backing this... If I sit on it and I don't back it and I wait till the 11th hour... If it's, you know, I can't, I can't imagine, the stretch goals are awesome, but I can't imagine getting to any of them. And the Greedo, even if it gets to that one, I'm like, yeah, I got a Greedo. Cool. I, I really want like Nabrin Lead, Leedus, whatever, or uh, Airely Shoss, the Wolfman, whatever. That's, those are the ones I want. And I, you know, the, those 17,000 is not happening. I would be absolutely shocked. I think there's just too many people Summer's a busy time for people. A lot of people spending money for vacations, family outings, little leagues. You know, the adults that are collecting these lines have other responsibilities other than just toys for the most part, uh, this one included. So I really have to think hard and long if I'm going to get this cantina. And I, I need your guys' help. Should I back it? Tell me what you're doing. Are you backing it? Is it a pass? What do you think about some of the other things coming out uh, for this summer? I mean... Nemesis Immortal, all day, baby. I'll have to get at least two of those. Any other G.I. Joe classified, got to get them. Still got G.I. Joe Jun Yojo June going on, so that means I've got pre-orders for the Marauders next week, for uh, the Stinger. I mean, I've got so many things that my, that's going to tie up uh, my you know, discretionary income. Does the Cantina, is it worth four or $500 of that? Right now, it's not worth $500. I don't want the outside walls. Change around, give me the Mac. Uh, the sorry, the Cantina ban. I might pay five hundred dollars for it. I have to think on this. But yeah, sorry for no uh, comic video today. Uh, it's weird because uh, on certain sites it says that Destro comes out today, which is weird. But I don't think that's right. I think it comes out next Wednesday. But next Wednesday, or I'm sorry, next Friday, I will definitely be reviewing Destro issue number one. I'm looking so forward to that. Thanks for listening to me ramble. With that being said, make sure you uh, drop a comment, like this video if you haven't already, it really helps out the channel. Visit coffeebrandcoffee.com. And with that said, I'm Mark, you've been watching Coffee With Toys, and I'll see you later. Let's go.